faithandreason.com. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Right now, uh, with this fight um, by the U between the U.S. bishops and the Obama administration on the uh, mandate that requires that all uh, employers provide health care insurance that pays for contraception, I've been telling my students that this is an epic event uh, in, the, in our U.S. culture and in the church. And they shouldn't sleep through this. It's certainly possible to just think it's one more political battle, it's one more little fight that people are having. But this really is epic. It will change the culture and it will change the church uh, if we lose this battle. And while it is, I think, to some extent about contraception, it's no accident that this has come up about contraception because contraception has changed our culture. It's been a radical change. You can listen to my talk, Contraception, Why Not, to see the changes of that. But here I want to talk about religious liberty. And a lot of us don't know the importance of what it is that we're fighting for. We've gotten so accustomed to having the freedom to practice our faith and the freedom to live out our faith the way that we think we should. And that the bishops think this is being threatened by this mandate is uh, incredibly important for us to understand. Again, we tend to have an erroneous view of what religious liberty is. Our culture tends to associate religious liberty with what's now called autonomy, the right to do whatever you want, whenever you want. And so we sort of say, okay, if people want to have green hair, they can have green hair. And if people want to smoke, they can smoke. And if people want to do goofy things or, or even wrong things, we should allow them to do it. And so if some people are goofy and they want to be religious, they can be religious. But we shouldn't allow anything that gets in the way of other people's freedoms because freedom is the most important thing. And so we'll let you religious people practice your religion as long as it doesn't encroach upon other more important freedoms like contracepting. And they, people don't understand. I mean, you know, we don't, for instance, if someone, a Jehovah Witness came to a hospital and needed a blood transfusion, um, now we would say, okay, if they want to refuse it, they can refuse it. But we wouldn't allow a doctor to refuse to, to give blood transfusions. He says, I'm a Jehovah Witness, I won't give blood transfusions. They say, well, then you can't practice medicine because that's part of legitimate medicine. And people are saying, well, contraception is something people want. If you're a doctor, if you provide a health care service, you should provide contraceptives. We say, well, I'm sorry, that's against our religious beliefs to do that. People say, well, you have to, you have to suspend those beliefs. If, um, if they get in the way of other people's freedoms. First, it's important, of course, to understand that contraception isn't medical care. Contraception is a lifestyle choice. Uh, it's not something that, uh, it, it's like paying for people's cigarettes. Um, they, if they choose to smoke, they can smoke. If people choose to contracept, they can contracept, but there's no reason I should have to pay for that on any, uh, on any grounds. But on the grounds of religious liberty and saying that we as Catholics believe that it's wrong to uh, contracept, it's wrong to pay for other people's uh, contraceptives. So we shouldn't be forced to do that. And you say, well, you know, that's just a little preference of yours, get over it. <laughs> you say, well, no, you don't understand what religious liberty is. The church actually says, John Paul II has said, that it's the first of our freedoms. The reason we're on this earth, the reason we're on this earth is to be in relationship with God. Um, our ability to worship and practice our faith is the reason we're here. And the reason governments exist is to help human beings achieve their end. It's going to help us with schools and hospitals and all sorts of things we need to achieve our end. And it's very interesting that the founding fathers of this country at one point decided that religious liberty was of immense importance. And the reason it was of immense importance was because the founding fathers realized that if they needed virtuous people to have a democracy. Democracy needed people who were honest and hardworking and disciplined and didn't steal and didn't cheat. And people who believe in God are much more likely to be honest and hardworking and diligent and not, to, te not to, to cheat and steal everything else. So the Founding Fathers privileged religion in a certain way. So they kind of, it's almost a utilitarian understanding of religion, that religion makes people better people, democracy needs better people. Well, the Catholic Church certainly believes that, but it's, it's stronger than that. It's that we're meant to be in relationship with God and that our ability to practice our faith is our most important liberty. It's not just um, an option among many. So again, the, one reason the culture is willing to just shrug their shoulders and say, let it go, is because they say it's no, it's no big deal. It's like, I mean, if all of a sudden having green hair was getting in, in the way of some great important thing, people say we can't have green hair, we'll, we'll, we'll rule that out. So if religion gets in the way of something important like contracepting, <laughs> then we're willing to squash religion. They say, do you ever really want to give that up for any reason? 
And that's precisely why many other faiths have joined the Catholic Church in protesting the HHA's mandate. Because they're saying, sure, we don't mind contracepting, but we don't think Catholics should be made to pay for things that they think are wrong. Again, I, I say it's a bit like making the anti-smoking league pay for contraceptive, I mean for cigarettes. You wouldn't make the anti-smoking league pay <laughs> for cigarettes. That's why they exist, is to fight cigarettes. Well, the Catholic Church exists, among many other reasons, to fight immorality. The Catholic Church should not be forced to pay for uh, immoral um, actions. And the culture doesn't seem to understand what is going to happen if we um, give up our religious liberty. Catholic schools may close, Catholic hospitals may close. All these great things that Catholics do out of, out of, because of our faith that says we must serve others, we're going to be saying we can't do it because we can't do it as we should do it. One final point. The, this current administration has denied funding to Catholic social services to help get women and children out of sexual trafficking. Why? Because the Catholic Church says we're not going to help these women get abortions and we're not going to give them uh, contraception. And the administration says, well, that's an essential service. And we say, well, we've been, we've been helping people out of sexual trafficking for decades, and we're doing it extremely well. We're one of the very top uh, services that does that. But now we're no longer receiving federal funding to do that because we won't provide, we won't promote abortion and contraception for these women. So a great service that the Catholic Church has been providing is being slowed tremendously because of a, a violation of religious liberty. So I just urge people to think deeply about this and pray about this, and I think they'll find that this religious liberty is really worth fighting for. FaithAndReason.com, an initiative of Franciscan University of Steubenville.